What is up, you guys? It is Case One with Road Rash Off Road. And first and foremost, I want to say a very Merry Christmas to my whole Jeep family. You guys, I hope that you guys had an amazing time spending time with your family and raking in some good Jeep products for your Jeep. I know I did. The only thing I asked for for Christmas was a remote start for my Jeep from MPC. Now, my wife had gotten me this and it was the key fob remote start, which is perfect. It's beautiful. I had other ideas. So I reached out to MPC and I asked them if they had the smartphone iPhone module connection that would connect to this remote start pretty easily. They said yes. So one of the reasons why I wanted the smartphone app for my car was for a couple of reasons. One, I can always look at my phone and see a connectivity to my car to find out if it's locked, if it's running, the temperature outside and GPS location. That's pretty cool. And then also, and probably more importantly, if you're using the key fob to start the car, you have to be relatively close in range. So if I'm in a mall, in a mall parking lot or in a mall shopping, I cannot start my car as I'm headed back to my car. I have to be in range, in sight of the car to start it. And then even if I do try, I don't know if the car started or not. I just kind of hope it did. But if I had the app for my phone, I can actually look at my phone, click start, and then the phone will tell me if the car started. And I can almost be anywhere because it's cellular fed. I can be anywhere and start my car. So that's the main reason why I wanted the smartphone version of the app. I can always tell whether or not the car started and I can start it and unlock it from anywhere. So I added that one to the cart and today we are going to be installing both of them. If you just got the remote start, you can watch the first half of the video. If you got just the smartphone attachment, you can watch the second half of the video. I'm gonna show you how to install both of them today. Let's go back to the garage and get this installed. We're gonna jump in here, start to take apart the steering column. We gotta unlock the car. Last time we'll do that. So the first thing we're gonna do, lift up our steering wheel so we can get a clear angle into here. And we're gonna pull this piece off here, which is pretty easy. It just clips in and you just Pull that down. So we're going to take our T20 and there's a couple of screws that holds this on. So we're going to take this off. And we should just be able to pop this right off. So once we have that removed, this is our ignition box here. First thing we're gonna do is remove this switch. Um, and it's just got a little pin behind here, a little push thing. And you just wanna press that in, kind of move it back and forth to work it loose. Uh, eventually, it'll come out. It's a little tight, but for those who have big hands and big fingers, just take your time and work it out. Now let's pop open these packages and see what's inside of them. Inside of our MPC box. You get some installation instructions here. our module, and then the wiring harness. Should be that easy.
Now inside of our cellular update, we've got our cellular module here. And then an additional wiring harness that plugs into this module. Let's get it installed. So looking at the wiring harness is very well labeled, which is awesome. This one says for optional parking lights, we don't have that. Um, this one does say cut this wire for Wranglers only. So on this one, it's a green wire that's wrapped. And we're gonna cut this one because we have a Wrangler. This one, it says for optional long range smartphone, which we do have, and we'll attach our other wiring harness to this one. And then the blue wire here actually says for optional kill switch. I think the first thing we're gonna do is plug in our main steering column into this wiring harness and we'll be good. We'll start wiring up these others. Wiring harness here plugs into this plug. Push it until it snaps. And then our other end here plugs into our ignition immobilizer. Working in that tight space again. I'm going to push that in until it clicks. Now these are all connected and wired up. Now we can plug up our module. So you want to take this black cable here, which is our power. We are going to hold down this button as we plug it in and these lights will begin to flash. So as they're flashing, we are going to stop it on blue. And now these are lit up, now we can plug in the rest of our required cables. They're all color coded, so red goes to red, white into the white, there. So now we should just be able to put this key in, turn it to the run position, it'll start flashing blue turn it off, and then hit the lock button. And now your car is programmed. To test it, if we hit lock button three times, we'll try it again. stops. So now that we have the main module hooked up, let's go ahead and hook up our smartphone extension for this. So it's saying that before we install the actual module into the car that we need to download the Linker mobile app and actually create an account. So we need to add the code to our... Can we take a picture of this thing? Man, we gotta type the stupid code out. So when we set this, we need to set our protocol to Fortin and hit accept. The device is rebooting. Okay. 
plug that into the module here. And that's all we should do with this, but then we're gonna to have to follow these wires back. So once we have that, this blue piece goes into this harness that's LLRS01. The blue one goes here. And then the black one plugs into the Evo. So now we're gonna pull the black power out of here and we're gonna plug it up with the middle black one from the smartphone power. So once we unplug this one, we're gonna plug in this replacement wire into the brains here. Now we should be all wired up. So it looks like we're connected. Let's try and see if our car starts. Okay, so I had to call tech support and evidently once you plug in the new one here, um, you have to go through the programming on this again, holding this button down as you plug this in. Now this time we are going to look for a red and blue light that is on this module. Like that. And then we'll hold it until the red and blue comes on again. Like that. And then where's my keys? So then now we are going to push our So now we should be programmed. Let's see. Okay. So it still runs from the key. Now let's see if we are getting a connection now from our app. It says that the doors are unlocked. Locked. Let's see if we can start the car. There it is. We'll stop it. So, it works perfectly. We're gonna take this, button it all up, zip tie it up underneath here, get it all nice and put away, put it all back together and we will be good to go. So we're gonna take our 10 millimeter and we're gonna remove this bottom piece down here. And this is where we're going to tuck our box all nice and neat back in here. Here we go. And now we're just going to put our pieces back together. She is good to go. And now we pop this little piece back on. She is all done. 
Now we can test her out. Make sure she's all working. So to test it out, we go here to our, our LT app. Right now it says our doors are locked. If we hit unlock, Doors are unlocked. Lock it back. We want to start the car. When the car starts, it gives you a countdown of 34 minutes for the car to run, and then I assumed that it would probably go ahead and just turn it off. But um, we're going to turn the car off. Everything's working. This is beautiful, a game changer. You guys, we finished the install of the MPC remote start to the Jeep and it was simple, like clockwork, with the exception of one thing. When we went in to connect the smartphone device to the car, the directions didn't say anything about resetting the module or the blue and red light whenever you do that. So I actually had to call tech support. They walked me through that. They were really quick to answer the phone. So big props to MPC. But if you're installing the smartphone app for your car, make sure you follow those last parts of the steps that I included because it does not say that in the direction. You have to tie the smartphone module into the Evo module by resetting it with the power and holding down that button just like the initial install. You guys, this was such a super, super simple install. I love it, it works perfect. I've never had an issue with it yet. And I think this is gonna be an awesome, awesome upgrade for the Jeep, especially in those cold winter weather whenever I need that car warm when I walk outside. Like and subscribe to these videos, you guys. I'm Road Rash, and we love making DIY videos and overlanding videos, and we want you to come along. See you in the next one.